Hi Lakeview. This is the first of many spiritual formation videos that we're going to offer over these next few weeks as we're doing our part to combat COVID. Is that a good thing to say? And of course, like all of you, I've been thinking about and wondering where God is in the middle of all of the chaos and change that we've been navigating over the last week. As Joe spoke to us about this last weekend, uh, we found ourselves in a place of desolate wilderness, of isolation. But Joe also reminded us that these desolate places have within them the potential for sacred meetings. And so I think that there's an invitation in this for all of us to embrace whatever we find most desolate about this time and to lean into that and discover if there might be something sacred about that invitation. Maybe the loss of a job is an invitation for you to trust God in a deeper way or to embrace the silences that you didn't have before uh, in a way that helps you expect and experience God in new ways. Or maybe the fact that you have children at home instead of at school is an invitation from God to embrace the present moment instead of always having things under control. The invitation for each of us is going to be unique, but we still need help to navigate that unique path and to navigate our own losses. So one of the ways that I found helpful to navigate these chaotic and unique times is by looking to stories from the past, which is very appropriate because one of our postures as Lakeview Church is backward leaning, which means that we look to the story of scripture, we look to stories from our history that help us navigate faithfully in this present moment. Uh, you may have seen the post on Facebook that says your grandparents were called to go to war. All you have to do is sit on the couch. You can do this. Now, I'm not sure that that's super helpful because it kind of diminishes the losses that we're experiencing in this time. Actually, sitting on the couch can be pretty hard work. But I think it recognizes that there have been times in the past where people didn't know what the future would look like and somehow they navigated it. And if we look back to stories from the past, we might find some skills for navigating our uncertain future. Here's the thing. People have gone through chaotic and scary times in the past. God's people have gone through chaotic and scary times. This is a new reality for us, but it's not a new reality for God. God has been proving God's love, God's kindness, God's faithfulness through centuries of chaos and heartache. The Psalms are one of the ways that we are invited to lean back into stories of God when it's hard to look forward to the future. And one of the Psalms that we've used in the last couple of weeks is Psalm 90. And this is what it says, Lord, you have been our dwelling place in all generations. Before the mountains were brought forth, or ever you had formed the earth and the world, from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. And in the message version, it says this, God, it seems like you've been our home forever. Long before the mountains were born, long before you brought earth itself to birth, from once upon a time, to kingdom come, you are God. Another story from history that I've been thinking about is the story of Julian of Norwich. She lived in the 14th century when the bubonic plague spread across Europe. This was a time of great unrest with lots of revolutions and many sicknesses. And when she herself nearly died at 30 years old, she was given a series of visions by God. Um, and these were so significant to her that after her illness, she became an anchorite, which means that she withdrew to a small cell and just meditated and reflected on the images, the visions that God had given her during her time of illness. 
And then she also used those meditations and reflections to become a source of spiritual help for others. Now I'm wondering what God might be revealing to us as we enter our own anchor holds, which is what those little cells were called when anchorites withdrew from society. Those four walls of our own homes, our own small spaces, where we're forced to leave some of the clutter and noise that our regular day-to-day -day life gives us. How could we begin to see those spaces as God's dwelling place? Julian has all kinds of lessons that she learned during her years as an anchorite in her little cell um, and during the times of uncertainty that her society faced. But I want to leave you with one today. This last year, I bought this poster when I went away and I hung it up in my house. Um, not knowing that it would have a new depth of meaning as we entered this season of life. And it has one of Julian of Norwich's most famous sayings on it. And it says, all shall be well, and all shall be well, and all manner of things shall be well. So here's your spiritual formation challenge for this week. Find a story in scripture or a story in history that can help you remember that even though we don't know what the future looks like, we can lean back on a history that helps anchor us in a deeper reality, a longer timeline than the one we can see right now. There are all kinds of ways that you can do this. You can read the Psalms, that's the easiest way. You can find a story in scripture that gives you hope and comfort. You could explore Julian of Norwich or other historical figures in our church, or you could do the Book of Common Prayer. There are all kinds of ways to anchor yourself in history. I trust that as you do this, as you enter history, that you will also meet the God who is present right now and has the same message that he had for Julian in the 14th century. All shall be well, and all shall be well, and all manner of things shall be well. As we retreat to our anchor holds, as we set up shop in our dwellings, may we find ourselves closer to our true home, the God who makes all things well.